and welcome back. Now this week we're going to be talking about a whole litany of disasters that befell me when I tried to modify this project of mine that is my bin lid monitor running on an ESP32. I want to do a shout out for JLC PCB. No, stop, stop. Don't go away. Look what they're doing. $2 for aluminium circuit boards. This is absolutely incredible. If you've ever wanted to try an aluminium PCB, now's the time to do it. Now remember, aluminium PCB is a single sided normally with the aluminium on the bottom. Then you have a dielectric layer that uh, transfers the heat up to the top copper layer. Now aluminium is very, very strong and it will suck the heat away out of your components without the need for extra heat sinks, for example. Go and have a look at their website and check them out. And there's more. JLC PCB now allow you to create your own parts library because there's nothing more disappointing than creating a PCB and then finding you can't get the parts or there's a big long delay. Now you can create your own custom parts library to ensure you get the components you need and of course the associated footprints so you know they're going to fit on the PCB itself. To get to this page that describes everything you ever need to know about creating your parts library simply go to their home page and then click on the link at the top. Very, very simple and a really, really useful feature. Go and check out JLC PCB now. So this is how the story starts. I've obviously got my monitor here for my three storage bins outside the workshop and they glow sort of green using NeoPixels, circular NeoPixels. We did a whole video on this and it was, it was pretty simple. Uh, State Machine ESP32, great. And then, of course, I realised that um, these continue to glow even overnight. And that's pretty wasteful, isn't it? I thought, obvious thing to do, um, turn them off at night when nobody's in here. What's the process that I use? Because I couldn't remember. So I had a look and, yes, it was an ESP32. So I thought, job's done. It's a no-brainer. Simply go and get the time from the internet every so often, you know, every 20 minutes or something. And... Uh, See if it's past, let's say, 8 o'clock at night, and if so, turn them off. And if it's past 7 o'clock in the morning, turn them back on again. Literally, it should take about 15 minutes of coding, especially when I snap all some of my old code that I've used in multiple projects around here on ESP32s. Um, just stick it in there. Jobs are good. In. Yeah, if I now tell you that it's been three days trying to get that to work, you'll see that, um, yeah, there was more than one issue. Hmm. Uh, also, just as a little by the way, did you know that on an ESP32, if you connect the 5 volts to the 3 volt pin by mistake, do you know what happens to the ESP? Let's have a little guess. One, nothing. Two, it just stops and reboots. Three, it blows up for something else. I'll tell you in a minute. Now inside this box, which is quite large, it's actually meant for a bottle of wine, but uh, no, there we are, there we have the three NeoPixel rings all going backwards and forwards. It was just an excuse to use NeoPixels, I'll make no excuse for that. That's fine. Uh, there's my ESP32 in that corner on this lovely PCB that JLC PCB made. And yeah, you see this this thing hanging out here now. What 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 is this, and why is it hanging out there? What you've recognised it already? Yeah, I thought you might. Anyway, we'll uh, come back to that. Uh, well, the long and the short of it is is that one, if you connect the five volts to the three volt on an ESP32, it blows up. So this one will be having the the funeral in probably a couple of days' time out in the uh, the recycling centre, I should think. Yeah. What a stupid thing to do. Anyway, that's enough of my woes. NeoPixels plus Wi-Fi on the ESP32, well, one that, one that works, not this one, doesn't work. Okay, NeoPixels ESP32, at best, at best, you'll get flickering on those NeoPixels. At worst, as I'm finding out, it just completely goes foobar. You basically reboot every so often with you either get a corrupt heap memory message or the pointer is pointing to nowhere or anything. I mean, the messages are manifold and none of them actually tell you what's going on. I spent probably the best part of two days trying to get that working and failed miserably. And believe me, I tried everything. Um, I know the internet inside and out now. I read every single page on the internet as far as ESP32s and NeoPixels are concerned. And, well, basically, if you've got the problem, there is no real solution. 
Hmm, so what to do then? So after two days of not getting it working, I decided, well, to follow my own advice, which is basically try and try again, then give up. There's no use being a damn fool about it. Because frankly, the internet is full of people saying they've got similar issues. So I thought, okay, admit defeat, just move on, put a time clock in or something, a manual time clock you just plug in to the wall. But then I thought, well, hang on, um, it's only time that I'm interested in. Let's let's have a, a bigger think about this. Why don't I just use one of these, which is a, a DS3231 RTC, real-time clock module. Now, I'd never normally consider using one of these when I've got an ESP32, because as I said before, the ESP32 can just go to the internet, grab the time, and then the ESP32 keeps track of the time. And every now and again, I'm not quite sure of the interval, um, expressive probably though, as part of their framework, um, it goes away and updates the time and keeps it all in sync. And it's very, very accurate. But then again, so as a DS3231, so I thought, all right, cut your losses. Wire up the DS3231. It is, after all, I squared C, so it only needs two cables plus power. And I thought, ideal. And on the board that I've got, I'd already sort of made provision for this. Now, as part of the PCB design that I did, um, you can probably make out on this picture, I've got all the pins for the module to plug into, but down the side here, you can just make out, I've got some extra ones, 32, 33, 17, 16, 2 and 4. Um, I think they're the only ones I've actually brought out. Then you've got ground, 5 volts, 3 volts. Yeah, whatever you do, don't connect 5 volts on the left-hand side there to 3 volts over here. I just shake my head in disbelief. Anyway, um, here's the um, NRF24L01 wireless module that's connected to a load of pins over here. Now, by default, I squared C belongs to these pins here. 21 and 22. But I'm using those on the NRF24. I don't know if I'm using them on here because I have to. I'll be surprised. It might just because they were close to this board. I thought, well, I'll use this bunch here. And I wasn't worried because on the ESP32, you can use any pins for I squared C and indeed most other things, to be quite honest. So the long and short of it is I've chosen pins 17 and 16 brought out over here is my SDA SCL and um, yeah that that just connects up fine when you do a wire dot begin you just say yeah it's it's those two pins over here and it works or does it so with that in mind that the PCB actually will accommodate me using different pins with the I squared C I thought brilliant we're onto a winner here, connected it up, added a bit of code, which is all of, you know, four lines or something, plus a library. And I said, go and get the time. And it says, yeah, I've got the time. Here it is. Ta-da! In fact, it was slightly more complicated than that. I loaded up Wi-Fi, thinking, is this going to blow up anyway? Loaded up Wi-Fi, grabbed the time from the NTP, set the time on here as a one-off thing, yeah, on startup, shut down the Wi-Fi, all gone, finished, and said to the NeoPixels, off you go. And it worked. They did not crash. Even though previously you just mentioned the word Wi-Fi near the, those NeoPixels and kaboom, corrupt heap memory or something ridiculous. Okay. So this was working and it was every so often, I mean in bugger mode, every 10 seconds or so, I was saying, go and get the time. Is it time to switch off the LEDs yet? And when it said, yes, the time's whatever, it switched them off and then switched them back on again in sort of night day mode. Great. And I thought, well, I just better make sure that the whole thing's working. Went outside, lifted the lid of one of my storage bins out there. And the storage bin monitor out there said, Oi, I didn't make contact with the NRF 24L01 on that board. Hmm. Funny, I thought. Let's, let's try that again. Anyway. Multiple attempts refused to work. I thought, this is this is getting absolutely ridiculous. You couldn't make it up. Having got my clock now working with that one-time access to the Wi-Fi, now the NRF24L01 wasn't going to work. 
Uh, and in between time, of course, I'd managed to connect the 5 volts to the 3 volts, thinking I was connecting to this. Little DuPont cable connecting, connecting. Oh, that's funny, it's not working. Oh, that's why. Yeah, don't ask, don't ask. When you're doing things in a rush, in a non-controlled manner, that's exactly what happens to me anyway. But anyway, the NRF24L01 Wi-Fi module from the Arduino on each of my bin lids out there. So as you raise them, they switch on and send a message saying oh, I'm open. And when you close them again, it says I'm shut. Every time you did it, it said, I can't communicate. Nobody's listening. So the long and the short of it was that using an NRF L24, no, NRF24 L01, that's the way, on the same pins that I squared C should be on by default, but we've changed now to use a different set of pins for this RTC module, doesn't work. The NRF24 just does not work. When I commented out the bit of code that uh, dealt with the RTC on those different pins, it worked again. Open the bin lid up, beep beep, yeah, it all connected, and when you shut it, yeah, it connected as well. As soon as I uncommented that line, and uh, got this to work, it wouldn't work. At which point, of course, I was really just to rip everything out, put it back to the way it was, and use that manual plug-in timer, as I mentioned before, which is a solution at the end of the day, isn't it? Let's face it. But I thought, right, well, one more attempt. The ESP32 is running three tasks, one for each of these individual uh, NeoPixel circles. All right, so they're independent and they each correspond to each of the three storage container bins I've got out the back. So as the data comes in it goes, oh this is for bin 2, it must therefore be the middle one and the task that runs this one reacts and makes it glow red and so forth. And I thought, alright, I'll put the code that reads the time from this DS3231 in another task, a totally separate task, that's running independently, and if need be, I could even run it on core zero, not core one, where you should run all these tasks. Put it into a task, and it worked. I know, I was surprised as anybody else. So I've got three tasks controlling the NeoPixels, plus a task now to control the DS3231 device, to get the time every so often, and uh, it's all hanging together. In this case, quite literally, with DuPont cables, and it's driving me, look at it, it's falling apart. But at least it's working. So that's taking me, what's today, Thursday. So I think I started this Sunday over, or Sunday or Monday. Sunday, I think. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, four days. Thursday, okay, it's working, but I've got to still completes the project, haven't I? I've got to put this back on its base, decide how I'm going to mount this that's got no room anywhere. Although, frankly, I could just leave it lying in there. And believe me, I'm tempted. Um, I will raise a bug, though. I'm going to cr try and create the smallest viable program using a task, a NeoPixel, um, some sort of I2C RTC, and raise two bugs, really. Why can't I use Wi-Fi when I'm using NeoPixel? Because that would have solved the problem right from the start and we wouldn't be having this video. Why does using different pins for I2C, which is one of the whole points of using an ESP32, uh, why does that then interfere with the NRF24? Is it one of those libraries that's not doing the right thing? But why does it now work when it's running in a task? Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre, I tell you. You couldn't make it up, could you? Okay, that about wraps it up for this week. As you can see with this very, very messy workbench where things kept get putting down rather than put back, just to get that thing working, um, I haven't had time to look at the part three of the HTML web pages of the ESP32, which of course means I can't do that now on that device either, because if I fire up Wi-Fi, Kaboom, those tasks fall over. Bit of a downer, isn't it? Hmm. Oh well, we'll talk about other ways of communications with the ESP32 in a future video, and very nicely it does work. Okay, that's all for now. If you've got any comments, if you think I could have done other things, 
Um, but remember, I've spent three days trying to sort this out. So your comments down at the bottom, please, would be greatly appreciated. If you think, oh, I had this problem and I solved it by this. Or maybe you've got a version of the ESP32, a Feather or something or whatever, S3, um, a C3 even. Anything that works with Wi-Fi and NeoPixels and tell me what library you're using. I'm using the Adafruit one, but I know that the Fast LED library also has those issues. So there's something fundamental, isn't there, about NeoPixels. Perhaps it's the bit banging of the signal. Who knows? Comments down below then, please, if you found it mildly amusing or you're wringing your hands in despair going, please, Ralph, you've really mucked it up this time. Uh, well... Give it a like anyway, because I'd like to hear the... Hey! Yay! Absolutely. And remember, if you like these sort of videos, don't forget, subscribe. And what's the next bit? You got it. You got to ring that bell, otherwise you'll never hear from me again. Disaster. Okay, see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.